Hello friends, this is Rob, Room 111. Welcome back to another episode. And in this episode, I would like to talk about the future of DSLRs and where they're going. And basically, in my view, where they should go. Okay, and I'm getting this basically, I have high praise for Sony and what they've done with the A7 mirrorless camera. And I think that's the future of where DLS, DSLRs should go because you can satisfy every niche in every market and I'll explain here in just a second but it's beneficial too to the manufacturers because it's actually modular camera manufacturing so here's how it works you would have one chassis so let's say for example you have a new chassis and let's say it's an icon and they call it the D7 okay and the D7 and so instead of using these subscripts or suffixes gets confusing because Sony uses the S and the R and it's really not intuitive. You don't know intuitively what an S or an R stands for. So let's say that the chassis is called the D7. It would be the D7-12, D7-24, so forth and so on. Because it's intuitive, the dash would say how many megapixels the camera is. So with the D7-36 would be the D7 chassis, 36 megapixels. So let me explain here. So in full frame, the camera, the cameras really should be in multiples of 12 megapixels. And we talked about, this is going to be kind of like a continuation of um, photo site size, and I'll explain that here in just a moment, okay? So if it's a 12 megapixel sensor, it's 8.5 microns by 8.5 microns, 72.3 square microns. 24 megapixel, 6 by 6, 36 square microns. 36 megapixel camera, 4.9 by 4.9 microns, 24 square microns, and lastly the 48 megapixel camera, 4.2 by 4.2 microns, 17.6 square microns. So now that's that's just technical stuff. But where I'm going with this is okay. What are the applications? So the 12 mega, megapixel camera would be a full frame would be for both basically online display. For the photographers like me and for many other people, the days of print are really past. That was old film, right? Because when you had a film camera, you sent it off, you had the negatives developed, and you had prints made, okay? Makes sense. Or unless you did slides. I did slides. I did uh, Fuji, Fuji Velvia. I did Kodak Kodachrome. I did some other slide film. So I didn't have prints made. I had slides made. I used slide film and I threw my slides up on the wall. I projected light onto the wall and I viewed them that way. I didn't have prints made when I did slide film. But here we're in the digital age. We rarely, rarely, really honestly make prints. It's We just view our stuff on our PCs, on our smartphones, tablets, so forth. So when we hang them on websites like Flickr, okay? So in that regard, the 12 megapixel camera is like the old D700, right? It's for wedding shooters where light is a problem. You're in a reception hall, you're in a church where they don't allow flash photography. So number one, you got to have a fast lens. And what would really help, not only having a fast lens, but also having a nice big photo site. So you're in churches, uh, people who photograph art, you're in a museum, they also forbid flash photography. So the people who would benefit from a 12 megapixel full frame, again, I'll repeat myself, wedding photographers, art photographers, and people who mostly display their work online. Okay, so let's move on to the 24 megapixel sensor. And this is the most general purpose, uh, general purpose a photo site size. So you, it's, it can be portrait. I would say, honestly, your boudoir, your glamour, portraiture, this would probably be the most versatile and all-around uh, sensor size would be the excuse me, not the sensor size, obviously it's 36 by 24, but what I mean by is the megapixel count is 24. 36, I'm really having difficulty with 36. I, I really can't find a niche for 36. I, I just don't see a place for it, but let's just pass on that for a moment and we'll go on to 48. So 48, and this is like the Canon 5DS. So the true application for a, a megapixel count this great is for two things. It's for police and military and let me explain so police you have a homicide and the, the uh, detective bureau shows up and in your larger cities they have an actual like crime scene unit but most of your smaller departments they just have a detective bureau right but anyways so they're gonna show up with this 48 megapixel camera and they're gonna photograph the entire scene right and this is gonna be used as evidence later so 
if they want to refer to that photo, they can zoom in with super great detail and examine things on the carpet. Maybe they, you know, I mean, they want to refer to these photographs later as evidence. So you definitely could use a 48 megapixel camera for police and photographing crime scenes, and even accidents. It doesn't have to be a homicide. It could be a traffic accident. You'd still would like to photograph it with a 48 megapixel camera, so you can zoom and get a lot of detail for later reference. And military, so police and military, it could be used for reconnaissance. You, you know, special operations unit, they go out and they re recon something, and you definitely want a 48 megapixel camera, so you, they get it back later and it's, exa it's examined for intelligence value. Again, the ability to zoom in super, super close would be beneficial to police and military. And also in intelligence too. So business intelligence, you want to try to, it's kind of less than ethical, but let's say you wanted to, you, you wanted to monitor something, you want to gather intelligence and you go out and photograph something, it's the same principle. So it can even be used in business intelligence, okay? Police, military, business intelligence. Now, the same thing could be offered in the APSC. The same thing, online display, boudoir, glamour, I don't see an application, and again, we're getting back to police and military. But this, police and military would not buy an APSC. If it's a deep pocket, it's government, they have plenty of money, they would just go with the full frame. They wouldn't, they wouldn't mess around with APSC. So this one actually technically can just go away. This one has really no application whatsoever. Okay, and this I'm really starting to question. But now, we just covered uses and applications. But here's the problem again, this is what I talked about before, okay? So, let me draw my line of demarcation. Okay, so now, continuing on from the five, I said the, the, the threshold is five microns along one axis, right? So 25 square microns is basically the threshold. Consumer glass, pro glass, handheld. Now, here's what happens. I could call it micro blur. I don't know the technical name for it. I just call it micro blur. What happens is it's mirror slap. Okay, mirror slap is a term is when the, the mirror when you hit the shutter, the mirror has to fly out of the way to let the light pass through to the sensor. But the mirror, when the mirror slaps, is causing a very minute vibration. And what happens is when you go sub five microns, that vibration is critical. It's so bad it affects the exposure right so the pictures are blurry the photos come out blurry it's very minute it's very hard to tell but if you really zoom in close on your subject and again when I said I use when I shoot models if I come in close on the face I can see this micro blur where the image is not razor sharp okay and it's not because it's a soft lens it's because the mirror slapping is causing the sensor to vibrate and not get a clear image so here's where the, the camera manufacturers they have to they have to make a decision, okay? And this is the decision point here, everything to the right. So the only way to get a good image here, and I've written it down. So if you're getting mirror slap, there's a few things you can do to prevent mirror slap. Number one is you put the camera on a tripod, okay? And if you notice on your selector, there's a select something called it looks like MUP, M-U-P. That means mirror up. Right, it's called mirror lockup. So what happens is you put it on mirror lockup, and the, the the mirror will swing up and out of the way of the sensor. Okay, so there's another way to prevent mirror slap, is you just lock the mirror up. Live view, you go to live view. It's the same principle. The mirror swings up. It's a live feed to the sensor. Remote release, you use a remote shutter release, and another thing is to set the camera on the timer. You put it on a tripod, you don't physically touch the camera because you might introduce blur that way also. So not only do you have the mirror locked up, you either got to use a remote release or you have to put it on five sec, two seconds, five seconds, ten seconds, whatever. You, let, you step away from the camera and you just let the camera fire. So if the only way to get clear images to the right of this squiggly line is to do that. So what are those? What you have is a mirrorless camera. These are all the things that a mirrorless camera are. Live view, right? That, that's mirror. There's no mirror in a mirrorless camera. That's why it's called a mirrorless camera. There's no mirror in it to vibrate. So the camera manufacturers are going to have to make a decision. Are they still going to continue to making DSLRs in, once you cross the 5 micron threshold? Or are they just going to relegate this to the mirrorless realm? 
they say, you know what, let's just punt this all together. We're not even going to make DSLRs, sub 5 micron. We'll just put these platforms, 48, 36 megapixel platforms, in the mirrorless body. And I think really that's what they should do. Because what's the sense, if, I, if the whole purpose of having a DSLR is to have the pentaprism, the light comes through, bounces off the mirror, passes through the pentaprism, comes out the optical viewfinder. Now that's an OVF, optical viewfinder, which means is you're, you're seeing what's bouncing off the mirror, right? And EVF is an electronic viewfinder, and it's basically you're looking at the feed on the sensor, okay? So it's no longer a mirror, it's light bouncing off of a mirror. It's really a true live feed. That's the difference between OVF and EVF. So my point is, if, if what you're doing, if you're turning a DSLR into a mirrorless camera, then why even offer it in a DSLR? Just discontinue it and just punt it, just literally punt it out to the mirrorless realm. And this is where I, I feel that the, the, the manufacturer, because Sony already did it, and this is why I give Sony high mark. It's on their A7 platform. So they make the A7 platform, the A7S, this would be the A7S, a7, A7R, okay, and A7S is also you know for video, the low megapixel count for video. They hit, as far as I know, they haven't hit the 48 megapixel threshold yet, like Canon has with their 5DS. But so again, in the Canon world, A7S, A7, A7R. So, so again, that's that's just I'm just kind of you know just thinking out loud here, and just to kick it with you, just and I'm going to open this up for comments. This is one of the for, and I would ask, please, to, to keep it civil. Um, I, that's why I don't allow comments on my videos because it always turns into these ridiculous one troll. All it takes is one troll, and it results in just ad hominem attacks against each other. And comments about your mother and, and, and your sister is you know, it's like, wow, okay. So I'm going to open this up for comments, but I would just ask, please keep it civil. Keep the, the discussion academic and above board and let's discuss this rationally and intelligently and if I see any trolling comments I'm gonna tr try to just delete them to keep this on course okay but please let me let me know your thoughts on, on offering this in a modular modular manufacturing platform right and then what are, what are your thoughts on just kicking these these here to the mirrorless realm just discontinue it so that the full frame would be just 12 and 24 megapixels and the APSCs would be just 6 and 12 megapixels then everything else would just be punted to mirrorless. Okay, I look forward to your comments and again, please, if you enjoyed this, if you, if you learned something from this, uh, please like and subscribe and again, I thank you for watching.